episode 10, Drowning Love. I had bumped into Joe in a bar in Bangkok, told me his story. This was early 2005, um, sort of middle of February we bumped into each other. I was getting married a few weeks later and then I was going to go to the village where uh, I have a village ceremony and later in the year after a quick trip around I was going to have my honeymoon in Phuket in Patong for a couple of weeks and I told Joe this anyway he'd gone off I mulled over it what he told me and all the story for a few days and thought about it and I reached out I tried I rang a girl who used to work in my bar Frozen who was my mama son looked after my girls she had no contacts one of the girls that used to work for me did have a contact in Phuket but that person had lost their bar completely and had just sold the rights to it to somebody who thought they could make a go of it um, so no contact there and I scratched my head and I couldn't think of a way any other contacts I had in Phuket out of the blue as fate does maybe two days before my um, the registry part of Bangkok for my wedding a friend of mine Andy Andrew contacted me he lived in the UK same as me long time friend and he was going to um, be coming over and he said he'd try and come to my wedding at the in Bangkok um, but he had a condo in Phuket and he hadn't been over but his condo's further up the hill hadn't been over to check on it since the tsunami and he was heading over there for a couple of days and then try and make my wedding at this point I just thought well, nothing to lose and I asked him if he had any time would he have any time going around Patong before he came up and he, he said yeah he's going to be catching up with a lot of his friends and trying to see how they all are and everything and I asked him could I send him a photo and I filled him in about uh, this tour shop and this these three girls I had a photo of one girl explained the story to him um, and I emailed him the photo with names and asked him if there was any chance he could make some inquiries because he did have a lot of friends there who had bars and businesses and he said yeah he'd try three days later um, it was my wedding and and he came up from Phuket to the wedding. Um, just, we celebrated that evening, had a few drinks around Bangkok. It was great, really good. I uh, hadn't heard from Joe, I had no contact at all. And on the morning after all this getting drunk with friends and getting married and all the rest of it, I was going to be heading off to the village with my wife, um, which is where her sister lived. So I was sort of chatting away. Andy stayed at the same um, place we did, the same hotel. And he suddenly, just out of the blue, said, oh, Simon, I forgot. Um, I found that girl. I mean, I was, I was took back as a, what, May, the girl from the tour shop, yeah, I found her. I said, you sure? I said, what, how, you should do, you sort of, how, what, is it real, is it her? He said, well, behind Second Road, they're, they're building a brand new um, shopping complex. And beside it, way back on the pedestrian area, there's, there's car parks behind here, but way, way back, there's some, small shops and a, a, a little supermarket then they're going to build pedestrian at the front and all sorts of stuff but those shops right at the back are brand new and there was a tour shop there he said and an e, uh, email cafe next door 
So I went down there to use the email cafe and I popped in the tour shop to ask if they knew this girl. Um, before I'd asked, he said I spotted her and checked the photo. And he said, look, I've took a photo of these girls in there. And he showed me a photo of May. I'd not seen a picture of Nan or Far, but there was other two other girls there. Don't know if that was Nan or Far, but the May picture, that was her. And the picture he'd taken at the front of the, the her shop, it was blurred. I couldn't make out the name of the shop. But he got a brochure, and on there it said, May's Travels. And there was a phone number. And it was her, the picture. I looked at his picture, it was her. He'd found her. Unbelievable. Don't know about the other girls, but May was alive and well. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. He hadn't told me the wedding it was right at the end before I'm about to go. He suddenly, oh yeah, I found her. Oh, I had to go then. It was getting on. Um, I thanked him and me and the missus, new wife, we were heading off to the village. Well, I had, I had my phone. No signal for the laptop or anything. I'd got a copy of this photo off Andy and I thought how can I tell Joe this is going to be the, probably the best email he'll ever have in his life and I sat and thought about it on that journey and I thought the best way is not with words is to send this new photo of her with the phone number of her shop and I'll just leave it at that um, and that's what I did by luck, fate. I put the photo on the phone, put the phone number of her shop, and I sent it to Jo. Um, it was maybe 10 seconds after I'd sent it, no, maybe more, immediately a message come back. It, what, in all the questions, and I just said, we found her, there's her number, ring her. Absolutely unbelievable. Fate. She was alive. But I didn't know anything about Nam or Far. A couple of days later, I got an email. So excited by the sounds of the reading it. He'd telephoned her and they were reunited on the phone. He was weeks away before he could get over. All excited in the other way of the emails and Nan and Far were fine. It seems that they'd shut the shop that night. They'd gone, well, Nan and May had left the shop and gone up on the hill to a bar where some of the Malaysian tourists were over they were doing some sort of party up at a bar, right up on the hills. A wooden bar that was reggae sort of bar, rock bar. And Far looked after the shop for a couple of hours and then at about 10 -ish, she'd gone up as well. They were all up there late when it all happened. And they watched it all unfold, but they lost their rooms. This was a new shop she'd opened. Don't know all the details. It was such a huge thank you email to me and his life was going to change and he said that he'd try and catch up with me in my honeymoon in October later in the year. I thought that was so lovely. And months go by, my wife and myself, we had our Thai ceremony later on. It was end of September, early October, honeymoon. And I got a message um, whilst couple of days in from Joe and we arranged a meeting an evening meal on Beach Road in the middle of Peach Road that it would have been a restaurant that was there previously that he'd have eaten and along he came with May I got to meet May it was 
where he just ran over and threw his arms around me and May gave me a sort of cuddle and shook my hand and and, and Mem. And they sat down and told us a story that they were planning on getting married. That he'd got his condo sorted out already, new job. They were going to get married. She was going to carry on working in the tour shop, and Nan was going to stay there working. Far was doing something else, but still floating. They were going to get married, live there in Patong, and uh, that was it. They were sorted. We had a meal. We talked for hours. At the end of the meal. <clears throat> Joe, we all said our goodbyes. Joe said to me, Simon, I've got a wedding present for you, for everything you've done. And he gave me an envelope with um, some money in it as a present, and it was quite a large amount. But anyway, it was a lovely thought. I didn't expect anything. It was just so nice to be part of putting Joe and me together. And there it is. Fate almost ripped them apart, put them back together. How fate stepped him, brought him to my bar in the early days, how it put us together in that bar in Bangkok, and then how my friend. There's fate again, it stepped in. My battery went. It's telling me I'm talking too much. But it did, it stepped in. Put Joe and myself together in the bar again in the bar in Bangkok. Then my friend Andy quite easily found May and her shop. It just was maybe covered up by, her shop was covered up by signs and things from the works going on for the shopping center. But Joe had been so close to her when he was looking for her, didn't realize. But there we go, drowning love, true story. I've really enjoyed bringing it to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I will possibly, with a friend of mine, be putting the full version of this, which is a lot more detail, into an ebook. And uh, I'll let you know when it's out. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you again on whichever video. Drown in love.